Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to show you the chicken planner that I put together. It has some of the records that I like to keep of our chicken flock and I did make it printable so that you can download it and print it pretty much instantly. This planner did take a really long time to make so if you want to purchase the PDF you're welcome to purchase the printable PDF for this exact planner or if you just want to watch the video and use it for inspiration for records that you can design on your own you are welcome to do that too but I will link this PDF right in the description box below and in the comments section without further ado let's get into it. I will also link this binder for you there are so many cute designs of this binder <laughs> the livestock guardian dog puppy is not linked. This is just one of two cover pages I included. My kid got a hold of a pen and I mean for the age did a pretty decent job coloring the egg there. That's not included but if you want to color the chickens on your own be my guest. Okay let's take a look inside. So the first page here I just have bird profiles. So I like to keep kind of notes on each bird in the flock the PDF is designed to be printed double-sided. So as you can see, you can just print as many pages as you need of each template. But I only filled out one of these right now. So just kind of has general information on each bird, some place to put a photo, various notes that you can look closer on the link. Basically just a bird profile to start out. I printed a few pages of those, but you could print as many as you need. The next page that I have is a breed review. I like to take notes on every breed that I keep in my flock so that if I see generalizations, I can take notes and remember for the future, especially if I have different needs in the future than I have right now. For example, you guys know I love the Easter Eggers. They have great personalities, fun eggshell colors. One of the cons I've noticed is that in the winter, their cheek feathers, the fluffy feathers around their cheek, will freeze when they drink water and then kind of create some health problems there. So I just you know, like to jot down these notes as they're happening so that I can have them in the future if I'm trying to decide what breeds to get, especially if it's been a few years since I kept that breed. Always a good idea to jot these things down as they're happening. So I have, again, you can print as many of those pages as you need to. Okay, of course I had to make an egg collection records page. I have basically each week is labeled and then each day I divide into two sections so that there's one for AM and one for PM collection. Then at the end of the week, you just total up however many eggs you got. You get kind of a weekly total. And then at the end, you can just put the monthly total. One thing I didn't add here, which I kind of wish that I did, is a space to take notes on the weather. So it's interesting to see how weather really affects what kind of eggs you're getting out of your flock. So maybe you could jot notes in this section, what the weather is like for that week, but maybe in a future version, maybe I'll adjust that a little bit. But again, this is basically enough for one month of egg collection records. And then in the future, next spring, it's really helpful to kind of look back, look at the difference between the months. Usually the summer months and winter months have a very big discrepancy. So that's why I like to take notes on my egg collection records. Next, I have a feed tracker. So I only just recently started tracking feed, but I think it'll be very useful to track how long certain bags last for how many birds we have. Here I just have the date opened, the type, the, the size, etc., and the number of birds that are in the flock because as we all know, the number of birds in your flock might change quite a bit. So I do have that there for each bag and then when it's finished, I'll just write the duration. I know you're probably thinking that there should be a price page on there or a price section. I will get there in just a second. Okay, here I have some health records. This is where you can just jot down the bird's name, the date, and then the diagnosis of whatever it is. I've had some cases of sour crops, some bruise, missing feathers, face, pasty butt, you name it. Whatever action you take is kind of a very shortened version here. There's a some place you can write more detailed notes later. And then just the date resolved so that that way if something comes up again, you can see what you did and kind of roughly between this and this, how long it took to resolve itself. But especially if you try different treatments in the future, you can kind of compare the res resolution date uh, with what you did before to see what is most effective. In addition, I do also have a health and treatment notes page. So this is where I would say, okay, like case Lucy on May 2nd, 2018. That would be this first one here. And that's where I would write down kind of the more exact things that I did for that specific case. So I think it's important to have kind of a collection of a 
a broad view and then also a more specific view of the health and treatment notes so that you can review what worked best and what was maybe not as effective. All right, next I also have a page for incubation records. So I actually have never done egg incubation myself yet. I would really like to, but uh, this is just kind of general information about the egg, the breed, the source, the incubator. You could print maybe one page for each batch that you do, or you could divide up multiple batches if you don't have too many eggs per batch. But it's got places to mark, you know, the, the day eight and 18 candle, what day you set it, what day you hatched it, and just kind of jotting down uh, your target temperature, humidity, lockdown, etc. So that again, you know, if you have some that are more successful than others, it might be useful to look back and see what you did differently to help them work a little better or what maybe didn't work quite so well. Okay. Next, I have a page, kind of general recap pages. So at the end of each season, I like to do a little recap. How many hens do I have? How many roosters? What's the flock population? Did I add any chickens? Did I lose any chickens? How much did I spend? How much money did I make if I'm selling eggs or selling chickens or selling fertilizer? Look, I'm gonna be honest, we don't really sell anything right now, so these numbers are totally made up. I don't know what would be really more accurate there, but again, you can you know say how many eggs did you get in the spring, and then I do have sections for you know a summer recap, a fall recap, and then winter and even a year end recap. And that way you can kind of jot, look through and say, okay, I'm making this many more eggs in spring than I'm making in summer or fall or winter, and then judge how many chickens you need for your flock that way. Also have a section for successes, challenges, and notes. I'm just a huge proponent of reflection and looking back on, you know, what worked and what didn't so that it's easier to move forward in the future. And because this is designed to print double-sided and there's an odd number of recap pages, I just kind of put an extra notes page on the back there. Okay, now I have pages for chores. So I have a page for daily chores, weekly chores, monthly chores, seasonal chores, and yearly chores. I think this is really useful. I think we're all really used to kind of the daily chores, but I think it's really useful to go in and write down, look, really, what should I be doing weekly? What should I be doing monthly? There's a section for feed, water, enclosure, which is probably gonna be the coop, and then just miscellaneous. So these are useful seasonal and yearly, obviously, like the seasonal, we would do our deep litter clean out. We might like sanitize the feeder. Actually, I would probably, um, for example, I would do like water, dump out old water and fill with fresh water every day. Weekly, I would probably give it a good scrubbing. Then maybe monthly or seasonally, I would make sure to set out the water container in the sunlight or give it some sort of other sanitation or sanitization technique. But especially I would say the daily and weekly chores are really useful for just having a snapshot of everything that needs to be done. So then if you have a farm sitter, especially if you haven't planned ahead, if something comes up and you need to hire somebody, you already have everything right there. You can just make a copy or take a picture and text it to somebody so that they can take good care of your chickens while you're gone. I think more the monthly, seasonal, and yearly chores are just good for our own personal organization to make sure that we're keeping up with those things that are really just easy to set on the wayside. If I look here, if, once I fill this all out, I can just look at what's there, put it on the calendar and go from there. Again, there's kind of an odd number. There's daily, weekly, monthly, seasonal, yearly, and then just kind of a blank page. So I put a notes page there to keep everything kind of on the right sides. Okay, so here is where I have an income tracker. This is where you would log money that you're making on your chickens. So maybe it's selling eggs, maybe it's selling actual chickens, maybe it is selling classes or uh, selling fertilizer or compost, that kind of thing. You could put it all here. There's a section for date, item, category, and total, and it's made, it's designed to be uh, used monthly. So you'd be able to see for each month what you made, and then at the end of the year, you could see which months you're making more, which months you're making less, which means of course, we also have an expense tracker. Again, date, item, category, total. So we might have the date, item is gonna be a bag of feed, category, I'll probably just put feed, and then the total amount there. And then same with infrastructure, maybe it's a new coop, maybe it's chicken run repairs, that kind of thing. And then at the end, you can total it up for each month. And that way, at the year's end, you can kind of look back and see which months you're spending more on chickens, which months you're spending less and adjust your budget as need as you need to that way.
All right, here I have pages for customer profiles. Again, we don't really do too much chicken selling of things ourselves, but this is where, especially if you're selling uh, eggs, this is kind of what it's made for. Each section has, you know, name, address, phone number. There's a section where do they like to be texted, yes or no, um, email, do they do delivery or pickup, amount, frequency, price, and some notes. So that might be an easier way to keep track of your egg customers if that's something you do, or even if you just give eggs to people, you like to give out eggs to friends. It doesn't have to be something you charge people for. This is just a good way to remember who likes to get eggs so that when you're inundated with eggs, they're not just piling up on the counter. You can look back and see, you know, who likes to get eggs and who maybe you haven't given some to in a while. And here, finally, I have a page for just helpful resources. I just put our, one of our own blog posts on there because I admittedly have done a very bad job of keeping track of resources. You know, this could be a website. It's got obviously like type blog post, a topic is sour crop, and then some notes there. It could also be a person. Uh, you could put like a veterinarian that likes to take birds there. So all sorts of different kind of resources we have. And finally, of course, I just have some pages for notes in the back. So again, the nice part about this kind of planner is you can really print however many of each page that you want for your specific setup. Um, it's really designed to be customized that way. I do have a template for each, like the bird profile. I have this kind of chicken motif that's on the cover in the background, which is something that's on some of the copies, but I also have a PDF with just plain text and lines if you don't really want it illustrated. So if you decide to get the PDF, it's made to be totally customizable as far as how many pages you want, if you want it illustrated or not, that kind of thing. Like I said, I just love this binder too. I think these binders are so cute. They have so many fun floral designs like that. So I'll link that in the description box below as well. So thank you guys for watching today. I'm really excited to be a little more organized with my chicken note keeping and my egg collection <laughs> records this year. Um, I think I've always kind of just jotted this stuff down or taken notes on my phone, but I'm really excited to this year have a more organized way of doing things. I'll just keep this out with the chicken coop and go from there. If you guys have any suggestions for pages you think might be helpful, I would love to hear ideas because I will probably put out an expansion pack in the future. This PDF took me dozens, if not over a hundred hours to put together. So I just figured I'd put out what I have now. And then if we have enough pages for an expansion pack in the future, we can do that too. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below, but otherwise, thanks for watching and we will see you next time.